V B N The Witch Video Blog Network Home to Weekly NFL Predictions Great Personality Profiles Great Professional Wrestling Video Blogs Great Sports Video Blogs Great N MBTA Video Blogs And a whole lot more Collection of my work goes back to June of 2014 on various social media websites. RVBN, the only video blog on the internet that matters. Time now is 6.38 in the evening on Sunday, February 26th, 2017. Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. This is Rich again, back for your second and final video blog of the night. It's a cold day out, right? Cold night, about 37 degrees. Going to be in the 20s tonight, but clear skies. Tomorrow, a little warm, about 50. And an unsettled week ahead with rain showers Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Highs in the middle 50s. It's not going to be raining every single minute of the day, but. At either time, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, if any clouds break and we if we see some sun, could boost it bit up to the 60s or 70. Could be another three straight days of 70 degree weather if the cards are played right. But then afterwards, cold, cold weather again. Looks like March could be coming in like a lion. Some news to report on the RVBN News. Why do do do? Boston Bruins, Boston Bruins beat the Dallas Stars by a score of six to three. The Bruins had a successful road trip. Hope they continue their momentum. Tomorrow night they're playing the Arizona Coyotes. They should beat them easily. The Arizona Coyotes are in serious trouble, in my humble opinion. They're going to be homeless soon. Move them. To Portland, Oregon, in my humble opinion. The Tampa Bay Rays beat the Boston Red Sox by the score of 7 to 3 in spring training action. Kurt Busch won the Daytona 500, the biggest race of the year for NASCAR, and it's the first race of the year. And sad news to report well, two passings. First, actor Bill Paxton, who's famous for being in Twister and other movies, died after complications from surgery. He was only 61 years old. And Judge Joe Wapner, being, he was famous for being a California judge for 35 years. Then he had a second career presiding over the judge of the People's Court passed away at the age of 97. So prayers to his family in this time of need. That's about it on news from the RVBN News. Why do 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 be back in a flash with my second and final video blog subject of the day. Tomorrow on RVBN. First video blog will be about the top 10 greatest coaches slash managers in New York City sports history. Second video blog will be about my TV network's history. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about the MSG house show card for the WWE on June 14th, 1986. Check it out. I'm back. My second and final video blog subject tonight is about the WWE house show card review from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, on May 19th, 1986. The main event was for the WWE Tag Team titles. It was the British Bulldogs, Davey Boy Smith, and the Dynamite Knight Kid, the WWE Tag Team Champions, facing off against the Dream Team, which is Bruce the Barber Beefcake. Bruce Beefcake wasn't the Barber then, and Greg the Hammer Valentine, plus other exciting matches. It was on the MSG Network, called by Gorilla Monsoon and his lordship, Alfred Hayes. And here's the matches that happened on this card. First match was Tiger Chun Li facing off against Leaping Lenny Poffo, one of the top face TV jobbers 
on soup on wrestling chat no on championship wrestling and all style wrestling back in the day. And this was about eleven minute match. Lan he won with the Hurricane Rada or what they call the Frankenstein. Uh, I wish Lanny would get a decent push in the WWE as like a big card wrestler. Wins mostly against jobbers and then hold his own against some of the mid-level faces. I mean, mid-level heels. The next match was Special Delivery Do Jones, SD Jones, facing off against Brett the Hitman Hart. This was like about an 11 minute match. SD looked very competitive in this match against the Hitman. He did his headbutts. He almost got near falls, but in the end, Brett the Hitman Hart delivered a backbreaker to SD Jones and pitting him one, two, three. Brett didn't have the sharpshooter back then. The next match was Hercules Hernandez with classy Freddy Blassie in his corner facing off against Soup, Soup, Superfly, CV Afi. He was getting a push as the new Superfly of the WWE, the new th theme norm. And this was about 14 minute match, very, very competitive. Ending had Superfly CV Afi give a cross body block, but the momentum of him doing the block caused Hercules to flip him over and pin him one, two, three. This cooled off Superfly CV Afi's push for the moment, but if that was Superfly Jimmy Snooker, he would have beat Hercules easily. The next match was Corporal Kirshner, who was a was like the replacement of Sergeant Slaughter, facing off against Nikolai Volkov with classy Freddie Blassie in his corner. And before the match, Nikolai Volkov sang the Russian national anthem. He got a lot of booze for that. This was another good match. Ending had um, Corporal Kirshner in control, but Nikolai throws him to the ropes and pins him using the ropes for leverage. One, two, three. Afterwards, Corporal Kirshner gets mad and Nikolai Volkov heads out of town. The next match was for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. It was Tito Santana, the challenger, or what Jesse the Body Ventura would call him, Chico Santana, facing off against the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah, dig it! With Miss Elizabeth in his corner, this was the third match Santana and Savage had at the Garden, and they needed a special guest referee. And the special guest referee was the living legend, Bruno Sammartino. And Bruno played it down the middle. And Santana was on the verge of regaining the Intercontinental title. But Adrian Adonis comes in and punches Bruno in the face. And next thing you know, like, Tito tries to help, say, try to help out, but Savage attacks. Um, Tito and Santa and Santana's being double teamed by Savage and Adonis and Bruno makes a save and you know cleans house. And this match was declared a no contest, meaning Savage retains the title because he did not get pinned or submitted or Miss Elizabeth didn't throw in the towel. That's the only way he would have lost the title if those three things, three things occur. A no contest means the match got thrown out and Savage retains the title. The next match was Mr. USA Tony Atlas facing off against King Corn Bundy with Bobby the Brain Heenan in his corner. King Corn Bundy was, you know, had a good match with Tony Atlas, very, very competitive. Ending, tw ending of the match had Tony Atlas trying to slam King Kong Bundy, but Bundy gives him the elbow and pins him one, two, three. He didn't ask for a five count for this one, which was very surprisingly because all the time, all the time when King Kong Bundy wrestles any opponent, he gets, he wants a five count. The next match was Ricky Dragon Steamboat facing off against Jake the Snake Roberts. 
and this was a seven and a half minute match. It was, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Ending had both wrestlers hitting the referee after it got out of control. Then the referee had to throw the match out, disqualifying both men because you can't lay a hand on any WWE official. If you do, you're automatically disqualified. And afterwards, several wrestlers from the back tried to break it up, but they couldn't. And both Jake the Snake Roberts and Ricky the Dragon Scene both fought into the dressing room. If it was today, they would have tons of the agents and the producers out there trying to break it up. The next match was Paul Christie facing off against Golden Boy Danny Spivey, who eventually in the WWE in 1995 became Whalen Mercy. Lives are gonna be in Whalen Mercy's hands. You know what I mean? Anyway, this was a total squash match, about three and a half minutes. Um, Dan Spivey gives Paul Christie the Bulldog. The next match was Jumping Dr Jim Brinter's cell facing off against Jim the Anvil Night Hatter. <laughs> this was a 20 minute match. Time limit draw. Very competitive. But there was no winner decided. And then the main event of uh, this Madison Square Garden House show card was for the WWE Tag Team Championships. It was the Challengers, the Dream Team, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and Brutus Beefcake with the must manager, Luscious Johnny Valiant, facing off against Davey Boy Smith, the Dynamite Kid, the British Bulldogs, WWE Tag Team Champions, with um, Captain Lou Albano in their corners was Captain Lou's 16th WWE Tag Team Champions. And this was about a 12-minute match. Bulldogs, Dream Team always would give uh, great matches. This was maybe an underrated tag team feud. Ending had Greg the Hammer Valentine pin the Dynamite Kid. But let's just Johnny Valiant hold Diamond Knight's kid, kid's foot to get the pin. The Dream Team thinks that the WWE Tag Team Champions for the second time. But the referee sees it and he restarts the match. And Dynamite rolls up um, Greg the Hammer Valentine for the one, two, three. The British Bulldogs retain the WWE Tag Team Championship. And this Madison Square Garden House Show card was a B minus. Some exciting matches on this card. And some matches are like, you know, typical for this time ever of the house show for Madison Square Garden. We're going to be continuing to do these Madison Square Garden house show card reviews up to December of 1986. Then I'm going to take a rest for it, but it's going to be back for 1987. I'm doing every single year of the MSG house show cards that were on the MSG network into 1992. So that's going to be interesting. I'll be back tomorrow. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus for your more video blogs. You know what they are. I'm not going to repeat them. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Button guy. Molly Walsh Blonde, the WCC, all hocks and has nice legs. Elizabeth Hart's also stunning. She's the best. Amy Sweezy's awesome. Awesome, awesome, Amy. Linda Church of WPIX Channel of New York. Such a wacky cool girl. Get the best leg in New York City. Bond on. Bob gives her ABC. Lemon has sweet set. The best leg. New Holly, North Carolina. Lisa Bell of New Six. Orlando, Florida. Oxen. She's got the fourth best legs in Orlando, Florida. And Melissa of the Tilted Kilts. Awesome. And has the best legs of the Tilted Kilts. And in the words of Dickie Ackler, the more the more.